people of the internet in our cyberpunk dystopia. This is going to be an explanation of why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I'm on YouTube, and just an explanation of all the videos that I have. But first of all, I'm basically a PhD dropout because academia has become a very inhospitable place, as you probably already heard. An inhospitable place towards disagreement in thought, an inhospitable place towards people that don't want to repeat things in order to get careerist points, what the right wing calls virtue signaling. And that wasn't my primary motive here. My primary motive, if the world was doing much better, I wouldn't be talking any about about any of this stuff. I wouldn't be focusing my videos on politics, but rather focusing my videos on philosophy. But because the world is so messed up, and I, and, uh, I think that the people who are trying to improve the world are basically paving the way to hell, while the people who believe in the devil's advocate position or always making the other side look good are being basically killing the messenger culture as i've said before is that the road to hell is paved with good intentions but the gates of heaven are opened by devil's advocates and i'm just going to go here and talk about some of my projects some of my video projects and ultimately the book project that i'm working on so first of all i wrote a paper called carrying over the burdens of trace and you can take a look at it if you Google it. Carrying. This was my December 2019 work of trying to appeal to the people who I thought were pretty much allies. So you can Google that, and there's many different versions of that essay. The text discusses how capitalism, colonialism, and historical trauma are linked to present-day crises, including issues related to civic management, environmental collapse, addiction. So this is basically where I'm coming from. I'm trying to, you know, solve the problems of the world. And uh, so trying to think about it at least. Yeah, some people need to do it. Right? So my project has basically come come down to this ohm dome project, which is basically a dome because my project was so focused on on collective rituals as a way of healing. Uh, this ohm dome project is a way of trying to get us all people of different colors and different cultures to try and work together. So in our multicultural landscape, the Ohm Dome project captures shared rhythms to inspire unity. As a public art initiative, it transforms or tries to transform urban spaces into interactive platforms where light displays echo our biological rhythms using our heartbeats and other bio data, creating a shared ritual beyond cultural differences. Deeply rooted in community involvement and timeless rituals, the project uses biometric data to invigorate daily life. It's supposed to bring some sort of consciousness into our daily ritual. And you can read my paper where I talk about it. I say, for example, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the on pervasiveness of rituals in our daily life. So I do have a little bit of spiritual backing. I do have a little bit of philosophical backing. And ho however, over time, I've become extremely more and more critical of the staunch perspectives that academia is taking not understanding that hillbillies are villagers, basically. And the hill villager people of the world you know, are not going to listen to their patronizing stance on everything. I can hear Chief Seattle crying out to us, urging us to remember when you know who you are, when your mission is clear, and you burn with the inner fire of an unbreakable will. No cold can touch your heart. No deluge can dampen your purpose. And yay, you are the stars in the darkness. Your light will not be dimmed. Your purpose will drive you in a righteous fight for freedom because you know who you are. So these kinds of hive mind idioms are just becoming really normalized. And this is the kind of people, these are the type of ideology that we're facing. So they are very sure of themselves. They have no qualifications. And this is what's happening with academia today. So what is my my cyberpunk philosophy, let's say. Here's my uh, deleted subreddit where I was kicked off and not allowed to grow my community, even though I had 251 uh, people in this community. So the idea is to embrace the post-apocalyptic apocalypse. So solar punk is an optimistic imagination. Cyberpunk is the reality of what is being actualized by our daily capitalist ritual. Cyberfunk is a negotiation where we retain our ability to imagine and entertain positive collective rituals even in the most pessimistic scenarios and trajectories. So I gave some, at the time I was a Reddit guy, so I was trying to give some other, unfortunately, other 
possible. No surf, digital minimalism, solar punk, cyberpunk. And we see that, that what's happened is in our TikTok culture, what's happened is that these, these short form videos have taken over everything. And one of the great thinkers that basically informed my channel is Marshall McLuhan, the guy who said the medium is the message. Now, because of Marshall McLuhan or because of his philosophy, I don't really go out of my way to create clickbait articles or clickbait ideas. I think that in the long run, what's going to happen is, I, or I predict what will happen is, people will, or at least some of the thinkers will, try to avoid these short-term videos that have invaded from TikTok to other forms today. YouTube and Instagram have all also picked up on this short form video. And it's, it's there for a reason. It's to colonize our minds, uh, an inability to think, and to enforce hive mind idioms, to make everybody repeat the same stuff over and over and over again. I was gonna use some swear words, but I mean, I'm trying to not get my channel throttled, but pretty much every video that I've sent to people are to people that disagree with my videos in the first place. I disagree with the whole premise. So that's an issue, right? I only make videos for people that are disagreeing with the very premise of my existence. And that's because I believe in like a Hegelian thesis, antithesis, synthesis perspective. I feel like we should listen to the people that we disagree with and to come to some sort of synthesis and to understand the villager perspective, to understand the groaning gut of the population, the groaning gut that doesn't agree with the patronizing stance that psychology and education departments are enforcing on other departments. And that's where we can see my modern conflict of the faculties video. So I'm gonna go through some of my videos here. When I started off my channel 10 years ago, I had some the C and Cake videos, and these, this is one of my favorite bands. And I also started with a video about, being, you know, I started making my own first clickbait, Gabber Mate destroys Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson. And a lot of people are commenting on this video. It's, Gabber Mate didn't destroy Sam Harris. But the only reason I created that video was <laughs> so that I could basically uh, get Jordan Peterson fans pissed off. At the time, and this is the thing, right? I, I'm on the other side. At the time, I was, I was on the other side. And the other side meaning, and I still don't like necessarily admire Jordan Peterson. I'm an actual student of Jordan Peterson, by the way. I'm a Jordan, I'm a Jordan Peterson student. And I, like, I physically went into his classrooms and took his Maps of Meaning class, or I audited. I never paid for it, but I asked him. He emailed me. This is before he was popular. Regardless, I also protested him. I also went through I didn't protest to him necessarily. I protested to one of his uh, henchmen, let's say, uh, Stephen Hicks. I, there's a bunch of people at the time. And so I, I'm going to go through the videos and you're going to understand what's going on. So we have a morning meditation routine I, a video that I have. I believe in meditation, ritual. And this is my Ritual Traces series, which is basically my pairing over the uh, Rituals of Trace series talking about every problem that we have today and has 2000 views not so bad not too shabby for a very difficult view and there's a whole series about this some of the videos i took down and put it back up and i really have to update these videos but this is basically the whole my whole philosophy the the limitations of art when it comes to decolonization how art cannot free us ritual traces four talks about tr ritual traces two talks about uh, nazism and adorno and arendt and heidegger and all of those questions uh, Ritual Traces 4 is about the history of mental health regimes that cultivate neoliberal subjectivity. And from this is the theme that I actually pick up on in my the book that I'm going to be writing on. And Ritual Traces 5 is Hegelians versus Spinozis, which I think a lot of people just don't understand because they don't read uh, very difficult works, especially with the affirmative action style of teaching that we have today, where people just get ahead by repeating idioms rather than actually putting any merit into their work. So everybody's just publish or die, and everybody wants to get a careerist ahead. So I actually talk about that in my later anti-psychology series. And a bunch of these videos that I have are kind of like post-apocalyptic theme, um, or the theme of gut brain, and how we have to basically pay attention to the visceral, the physical aspects of our bodies, our guts, pay attention to our guts, pay attention to our whole bodies. You know, when I, he when I, I think I healed, when I fully healed, you know, I, I became very aware of all of my vibrations, all of my, and this is kind of the sp uh, everything kind of spiritual that I say, um, I, I bring that into play. Next one, we have Zizek on the commodification of love, how I use feminist ideas because I was a feminist. You know, I've, I've, I'm very well trained as a feminist. I, and these are basically excluded feminists. And even uh, Spivak, who was one of my favorite thinkers, she was even called out as a racist, misog all of those things as well in our, in our time of 
everybody hating each other. Uh, then we have more post-apocalyptic videos from Primer and Everybody Hates Chris. And I also have a video called The Birth of Toxic Masculinity and Biopolitics, which was a spin-off of my Ritual Traces series. But it wasn't really a about that, so I made it a spin-off series instead, which then kept growing into the Unwitting Colonizers playlist. So if you search Unwitting Colonizers on YouTube, probably mine will come up first, although all my videos are right. The next we have the sublime imminence of messianic time, which was b the ba main goal of my work, which is to try to make peace between the Confucianist China and the Christian world, because I feel like there's, you know, there's going to be a World War III there, <laughs> or I felt that two years ago, and it's, you know, might be getting worse now. So we have uh, interdimensionality versus intersectionality. We have, I'm trying to bring in spiritual aspect to things. And I love really talking about aliens and UFOs as well. And that's something I would rather be talking about. I would rather be talking about John Anthony West and Graham Hancock and all those kinds of spiritual things. I'd rather I'm forced to kind of talk about these issues that are really not allowed to be talked about. And then we have uh, a, a th an ongoing theme in my channel is that complicity is more important than intersectionality. We have to analyze our complicity, but of course that's not something that responsibility is not something that the progressive so-called left believes in. And I'm, I personally am a leftist and how do I define that? I, I define that as the old, the simple Marxist line, to each according to their need from each according to their ability, something like that. But unfortunately, because we commodify our interpersonal relationships, we can't really have that kind of relationship with each other. And instead, we have neoliberal subjectivity instead. So that's the whole thing. So both virtue signaling capitalism and social credit scores are a threat to democracy. That's a video about a lot of my videos. I'm comparing what's going on in China, the neoliberalism of China, which I, I, I call it distinctly neoliberalism in China and the neoliberalism in the West. It's two different types of capitalism. Recently, there was a line that we thought that the capitalism would change China, but in fact, China, in fact, created its own version of capitalism. Here is my bell hooks on cultural criticism, which is a full version of her cultural criticism work, which was basically a long time ago, I was a big fan of bell hooks, and I do have a tribute to her work. Uh, however, I've become obviously a heretic in that time. We also have Stuart Hall, uh, very important works. And he, in interestingly, Stuart Hall also have something called the Maps of Meaning, which can be compared to Jordan Peterson's work. A lot of my work is based on Hannah Arendt, which is a hated figure right now in the left left wing circles. Again, more Zizek, uh, early signs of the post-apocalyptic, the connection at, between love and sex is seen as patriarchal, which is a pro problem. Uh, why is Dave Chappelle allowed to talk about Me Too? Dave Chappelle was the person who had this what I call Arentian feminism. Arentian feminism, which is taking responsibility, getting off the bus, which I thought was a powerful message against what was going on in Me Too. Of course, all of my videos are throttled and the the horde comes and clicks uh, those clicks that button so that people don't look at my videos. They click it. So uh, again, more apocalyptic scenes from We Could Be Legends and another analysis of, these are my early analysis of me, neoliberal intersectional psychology versus Marxist feminist psychoanalysis. And I'm trying to save some idea of psychoanalysis from psychology here, but that was kind of my old perspective. Now I'm kind of throw the baby with the bath, throw out the baby with the bathwater. Not completely, of course, but we really need a, a structural reformatting of all of the hive mind idioms enforced by careerism that we have today in academia. Then we have uh, a critique of the Quran, which might seem out of nowhere, but uh, I feel like there's a, I'm critiquing ideology here. So there's a lot of Quranic or Islamic uh, ideology, which I find also problematic. And this is basically a video where I talk about all of my issues with the Quran itself, an exegetical analysis of co the Quran. Next, we have the typical conversation with a male feminist or ally. So this is just, you know, they, they commodify our emotional labor. They don't actually have the conversation. They dismiss. And that's basically been the tactic that I used to use. Right. But then the difference is that I actually went out and started. I was somebody who's always wanted to debate the people that I disagree with. And so maybe perhaps some of those arguments rubbed off on me from Leo Strauss specifically. And I've been reading more and more about that. So to critique is to love and love has become so rare. Another video about a lot of my videos are about in defense of love, I guess, or some sort of idea of, of uh, love, which is now itself patriarchal. And then we have the modern paranoia 
of the paranoia of modern conflict of faculties, which is basically what's going on. And I've been trying to navigate these modern conflict of the faculties for a very long time. In fact, uh, so I go and I critique Colbert here because Colbert, this, this was an interesting clip where Colbert is repeating ideas which he doesn't fully understand. He's a comedian, right? He doesn't have an academic background. He doesn't fully understand. Uh, next, we have uh, examples of, again, our post-apocalyptic situation with how identity politics and cancel culture breeds more identity politics than can cancel culture. It's exactly this, the tool of the state that is needed to control us. And that's what, exactly what they need. So Patriot Act 3.0 will be intersectional. I keep saying that. And we have an, a really great analysis that I made on Carrie Borisov, where she is just a prime example of how narcissism is a norm in our academic culture today and how academic culture really breeds narcissism. Uh, Annie Aloko Tariba, sorry, I get a lot of names mixed up here, Wittgenstein and Wittgenstein, you know, I, I'm not very good with pronouncing names. So Annie here is another African perspective that she's been very critical of intersectionality, but sometimes she also repeats the hive mind idioms. And I don't blame her because it's just so, and I think that the only way to really understand the ideology is to go completely outside of the ideology that's basically how you critique an ideology. You can't critique an ideology from within. Next, we have uh, Chomsky explaining what democracy is and how democracy is a threat to every ideology. Uh, although, of course, uh, Chomsky, I don't know, his recent, uh, his recent uh, Epstein connections are kind of iffy for me. And then we have uh, Sloterdijk and Derrida, which are two, again, important influences, Derrida being an important influence for me to understand our present post-apocalypse. And this is uh, basically an audiobook of the whole Derrida and Egyptian, a very good series by Sloterdijk. Then, then we have um, Ron Roberts' Psychology and Capitalism, which is, again, uh, one of the main themes is how psychology is, in fact, enforcing neoliberal idioms, it's enforcing neoliberal subjectivity. That's one of the ongoing themes of my channel too. You can see them in, in the playlist. So if you just play the playlist and just go up, go and watch the whole thing and you will understand basically the very complicated perspective that I'm taking. Next is one of my best videos, an epidemic of neoliberal idioms killing solidarity. And this is basically, Butler was my professor. If you can look at Critchley, Critchley was my professor. I hung out with him. And <laughs> these are all my professors from the European Graduate School. And I'll make a video on the European Graduate School in the future but uh i've you know i've hung out with these people and i just found it really amazing how people can call themselves philosophers but then repeat hive mind idioms people like butler and they think that they're doing the right thing and they moralize it as well and then we have carol johnson uh one of these really old papers that is again uh, not allowed to be spread by academia does capitalism need the patriarchy and how she's critical of the hive mind idioms. If you're critical of the hive mind idioms, you will not get published. That's the issue here. Next, we have uh, Kasperian and uh, Featherstone talking about masculinity, which I thought was ridiculous. Now, Jimmy Kimmel has become a feminist idol, which is really crazy. And I gave a little, uh, it's just insane. That, and I go, uh, actually talk about that in my toxic masculinity series as well. Then we have a, <laughs> a funny video about Epstein and... Oh my goodness, this is just, I, I'm, I'm going to go to hell to create, by, because I created this video. And I just couldn't believe that, you know, the whole Me Too struggle wasn't focused on Mep Epstein. It should have been Epstein at the, at the forefront, and it wasn't, for good reason, because we were just drowning in um, endless hive mind idioms. Next we have uh, the tribute to Bell Hooks, which is a couple, three or four uh, videos, three videos that I have on Bell Hooks. And one of the interesting ones is the conversation with Gloria Steinem here and how that's just a like a really interesting situation where we can see that Bell Hooks does have was basically the last feminist that was able to or th was able to see the problems with feminism in my opinion and Bell Hooks was the one who started a lot of controversies where by saying like for example her perspectives on Beyonce if you don't know just search Bell Hooks on Beyonce next we have a defense of Terence McKenna Terence McKenna is somebody I really admire he's really you know, I, I don't want to talk about that stuff right now, but uh, Terence McKenna, in this perspective, criticizing Terence McKenna was, I, th I just thought it was a very good example of why, you know, academia just pu pushes out all of these hive mind idioms to, and then they call it critique. It's just, it's very difficult. And what do I mean by hive mind idiom? I mean that, you know, not to not never use idioms, but rather that we have to be extremely conscious of our idioms and our idiom usage, which, which we are not. We just, you know, have these prepackaged ideas and then they become truths in themselves and no longer even questioned. 
within our social situation and it's really terrible. So the next one we have South Park. Uh, I have a bunch of clips, a couple clips from South Park here because they do a very good job of just critiquing the situation here. And this is, um, you know, telling Alexa, a neoliberal robot, basically, that you have to get therapy in order to get to get fixed. Next, I have one of my favorite uh, books, which uh, was not one of my favorite books, my favorite critiques of a book, which is all about the death of love. It's all about love by Bell Hooks and how men's lib, men's liberation and all these uh, male feminists tell us to read this book. And I do a pretty long analysis of critiquing, critiquing that perspective. Then uh, we have Joy James, another feminist that is critiquing from the inside, uh, Angela Davis, which is actually a professor of mine, Angela Davis. And I'm, I'm becoming very much critical of carceral feminism as well. And you know, the reason why carceral feminism exists is because so much of feminism is in fact carceral, that there has to be this special category called carceral feminism. Next we have why the internet sucks. This is basically an uh, introduction of everything that my channel talks about. This is my short introduction. Why does the internet suck today? Next, we have The Hegel Variations, which is an amazing book. I read the whole thing, or most of it, and uh, made an audiobook with interjections. But most of my audiobook readings are with interjections. So I go through it and I talk about why it's problematic, why there's problematic things, and I do an analysis as I'm reading. Next, we have Why Do Men Not Express Their Emotions, which is a clip out of my, my all, of, all About the Death of Love series. And this is How I Live, which is another cyberpunk dystopian video, and another uh, clip from Futurama, which is another cyberpunk dystopian video. Maybe I'll make a, a playlist just for these. And another one we have is Cancelling Critique and the Ruse of Repair by Patricia Stolk. And this is a really good example, and I have so many highlights here of critiquing what's going on. Here's my last uh, playlist critiquing four points of uh, progressive neoliberal subjectivity, which is one of my perspectives about the whole situation. Catherine Rottenberg, one of the amazing perspectives defending Arendt from prescribed intersectional neoliberal hive mind. Next, we have the unwitting colonizers theories, which is this one I talk about my own experiences in activism and how activism itself has been destroyed. I've, you know, I've lived in many different communes and many different places, and unfortunately, everywhere you go, these neoliberal hive mind idioms are destroying solidarity, replacing solidarity with prostitution. Next, we have an initial reaction to buck breaking, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, again, part of our post dystopian perspective. A review of The Matrix 4, which <coughs> unfortunately I'm a big fan of Matrix 1, 2, 3, and Matrix 4 was just, it, it basically put us back into The Matrix, right? It's just an amazing, amazing film to uh, ideologically analyze. Here we have. Uh, David Graeber critiquing, tiptoeing around the orthodoxies of interse intersectional analysis. Unfortunately, David Graeber's one of one of the works that I really wanted to do was the new book, The Dawn of Man or The Dawn of Everything, was just a, a terrible was just a terrible. I feel so bad for David Graeber because you know that those that series that that new book that came out was basically just a straw man version of David Graeber's Dawn of Everything. It was written by this guy, and I'm, I'm by David Wengro, and I'm, I'm, I'm becoming really, I'm becoming sure that David Wengro is some sort of CIA agent or something, trying to strawman David Graeber's perspective. And crazy enough, it has very good five star reviews on Goodreads, which is, which is saying something. And I'm gonna get back to that again. This is part of the, just this hive mind. Uh, perspective in in academia that just is in, unable to critique next we have just the the neoliberal takeover of education by Carl Ratner uh, Priya Gopal and Brian Leiter so there's a bunch of people that are talking about the uh, neoliberal takeover of education and so ever since a great speech about and Neil Postman as well and ever since that great speech about military industrial complex by Eisenhower Molly Farnett's Hegel's social ethic and uh, again critical read of uh, Farnett here these are two really amazing book i mean this is just one two amazing videos that i did on uh, criticizing an amazing book it's just an amazing book the hegel social ethic people really need to understand hegel next i do a comparison of neoliberal marxism and neoliberal psychology a critique of silvio federici federici again is one of the one of the main you know i have a friend uh, aaron who has recently you know all of my old friends have uh, are disassociating from me because of my perspectives um but it doesn't really matter i stick with the truth and she actually crit 
uh, wrote a article about his book about degrowth. Aaron Van Nisten Van so Aaron Van Nistengen. So unfortunately, he has uh, is not my friend anymore. Unfortunately, he was a really good friend back in the day, but because of the perspectives I've taken, you know, he has a medical degree, and we actually were in the same <laughs> school at the same time as Grimes. Grimes went ahead and married Elon Musk, which is really funny. Um, next, we have uh, one of my good videos is really good videos is in defense of Gayatri Spivak because again. Spivak has been attacked by the hive mind idioms and called a colonizer and all this stuff or uh, because of her Brahmin perspectives by Chibber, Liu, and Majumdar. And I do a critique of Chibber, Liu, and Majumdar and basically talk about how it's the result of the publish or die mental neoliberal situation. Uh, Peter Dinklage, another short post-apocalyptic video, the importance of rites, and rites of passage and collective uh, rituals, which is a clip from my Ritual Traces series and the biopolitics of sex. And basically here I'm talking about how it's so important that we take responsibility that we are complicit, that we take uh, responsibility of our complicity within our choices, but that's not something that mentalization uh, and savage, noble savage theorizing today really upholds. And they keep calling me all of, the, all of the terrible names that they do on the internet. What reason do we have to be not racist? Again, another short series from It's Always Sunny. So I take a lot of these little clips and try to make little uh, jokes out of them. Next we have history of critical race theory and feminism, professional gal gaslighters, and the moralizing of capitalism. This video was, I did a very hard work. Of, I did a whole history of how we are in the situation that we are and how these ideologies create professional gaslighting. Lisa Simpson on basic psychology, again, another uh, little post-apocalyptic video. The social origins of our cyberpunk woke racist dystopia. This is a very good video, a very short video about um, where, again, where, where did it start? Where did all this bullshit start? So we have Plato versus Aristotle, intro to the series of um, neoliberal colonial, neoliberal moralizing of capitalism. So this is one of the, my main themes is that we are moralizing, justifying, normalizing neoliberal intercept in, in cost benefit analysis in our interpersonal relationships our friendships our kinship the neoliberal left is just as responsible for the rise of fascism this is uh adolf reed talking to our economic man right here next we have a video about uh, universal oneness and the importance of maintaining our local languages next we have a video on doing an analysis of again what's going on with a palestinian activist Loki and a lot of these people that think that they're doing critique against the hive mind idioms are actually themselves stuck within it. Next we have Ayn Rand and the moral bankrupt civilizing mission which I really have a critique on Henry Kissinger. Cold Mountain theme where the native guy fights the black guy I think that was really well done and it was just a one minute in the video and I thought that was the best part of the, the movie because it really shows the ideologies that are clashing in our modern time. So leftist anti-communisms with Adolf Reed and Ponce de Leon. This is a, a response video to their talking. And back then, you see, I was promoting the cyberpunk, our cyberpunk, unfortunately. Um, another Always Sunny is based <coughs> perspective. And here is another a series of videos I did on Leo Strauss and how Leo Strauss warned us long ago how wokeness would break and destroy academic thinking or intellectual thought. And he does a distinction between academia and intellectualism as well. Again, more South, Cl South Park clips about family rituals, the importance of family rituals. So I take the, I kind of take the Mormon side here and just try to show that you know, every perspective has, you know, merit. Uh, when Idpol claims that they are about class, again, another short video, the year of the tiger, Vietnam War. This is kind of connected with my Kissinger video. Just unbearable what's happening in the Vietnam situation in the past and Cambodia and all this stuff. Hassan Piker, one of the main ideologizers, my, you know, I make a little funny video responding to him. And again, a little video here about how insane racism becomes normalized. They've normalized really hate. They've normalized hate on the other side and they call it progress. My emotional response to the Pope's speech where I, I give a little cry here to show my you know, anti-toxic masculinity. Was Hannah Arendt a racist? A defend of Hannah Arendt. And I have a bunch of Hannah Arendt videos. Is Hannah Arendt a sexist male supremacist? Again, we have the bias of YouTube. 
the difference between ritual studies and media studies, which is basically everything I'm doing. Then we have a uh, defense of the edge lord, which is my long video response, or this is just a short preview of my long video response to the signifier. Who was the original Iron Man? And another short video talking about the cyber, our cyberpunk dystopia against nihilism, a short critique of uh, blog brothers. Here we talk about, again, uh, a lot of people just don't understand nihilism or there's a lot of straw manning here. There's a, we live in a platform straw man culture. And then we have Hu Jintao, what happened with the situation last year. And this is why I don't really support China. I used to, but unfortunately they have become incredibly dictatorship. Unfortunately, my uh, In Defense of Edgelords video, which is four and a half, four and 50 minutes hours long, hasn't been watched by that many people, just 100 people. Uh, Feminism versus Marshall McLuhan series, uh, Shadi Hamid. Uh, this is just about how a lot of these I people that I cover understand the theology of society and, and the importance of talking about theology. A little video in ChatGPT, some video about uh, Rainbow Gathering that I was at, and a defense of Agamben. If you don't know who Agamben is, he's one of the theorists of biopolitics before or after Foucault, one of the deep theorists, and he was also called out recently. And I call out his calling out as an example of the publish or die culture of neoliberal colonials. Yelling, t lying Ted to his face. Again, a lot of our issues are about the connection between the public sphere and the private sphere. So this is just an example of how the public sphere is just eroding. So Unholy Alliances was a really good lecture by Zizek. I don't usually post uh, videos by itself without analysis, but this was a really good one, so I posted it. A video on the health effects of microplastics. Microplastics are killing us, and I have a bunch of, that's a video series on neoliberal science. And then I have a long video talking about how Reagan and Iran were basically making deals while they were lying to their own population regarding the other side. And this, this is just, a, I call it KFAB. Another really good uh, South Park video talking about ontotheology, which is uh, one of the basically methodologies of my channel. After the Apocalypse, a really good work by Andrew Basevich. He also understands ontotheology, which is something that I talk about. And then we have Conan and Charlie Day versus Kierkegaard. I love making those little videos that basically do an analysis of present day cyberpunkisms, including Putin hasn't started anything yet, his threat, and there's another one with the Iranian threat. And this is uh, Dr. Shiva. I, I like his just unrelenting perspective. I'm not sure about his perspectives sometimes, but I think he's a really good candidate and maybe Cornell West as well. The Gods Must Be Crazy, a really good movie about how capitalism colonizes in a way. Uh, neoliberal science on the neoliberal justifications of glyphosate. And, and we have a whole chemical series about that coming up. And in an AI world, there are no markets. And I do a lot of economic analysis. I have an economics background. Leave George Santos alone. I'm, this is basically an Arendtian video about how lying is just endemic in politics. Moralizing capitalism. This is one of the main videos as well. How the, the left does a better job at moralizing capitalism than the right. And here is some of my world travels where I've, you know, I've been to 50 countries around the world. You know, I've been to a lot of places, you know, I hitchhike and people, people are always telling me to touch grass. And I'm like, bro, I've touched more grass than you can even imagine. Uh, and more videos on AI. So you can just search AI and those videos will come up. So here we have neoliberal psychology versus solidarity. And that's basically how solidarity is dying because of psychology and the psychological perspectives. Um, how the rich are being bailed out in Canada, Canada and anti-immigrant left that doesn't understand the petrodollar. Now we can see a lot of these, what I'm trying to do is basically you know, unwrap. There's a lot of weird things that are going on. I'm trying to unwrap a lot of perspectives that, you know, there's a lot of obfuscation going on and the obfuscation of is purposeful and it's starting from academia itself. What is philosophy? So philosophy here is to corrupt the, re corrupt the youth. That's a little clip from Zizek. Dealing with the reality of the end of American exceptionalism. Again, part of that and Andrew Vasevich video. Chantel Mouffe. A very necessary perspective that I think a lot of people read in political, political theory today. Again, here I talk about soccer and how uh, soccer, what happened in soccer in the last couple of years was very good sign uh, against neoliberalism. I thought that was like the most positive perspective that we've had so far. An interview with uh, David Grosh, the recent UFO interview. I'm really into UFOs. So uh, transforming sleep analysis, paral paralysis into a gateway for lucid dreams. Some people have asked me to create a video about that and I'm really into the lucid dreaming. So I really like that. Psychoanalysis, history and radical change. Again, now we're into our 
critique of psychology series, The Seven Deadly Sins of Psychology, how there's so much scientism and so much self-assurance in psychology today. It's really insane. Again, another perspective uh, that where I say the personal is not political. This lady over here, she's really good with critiquing the colonialism from an African perspective, which I really like her, just like the Annie. But again, a lot of these people end up, well, not her, but Annie, for example, um, learns to basically, they all sometimes repeat the, the repeat the bullshit too. Cyberpunk women, uh, again, a part of my series on cyberpunk, and this Tadao situation from Fresh Prince, which I thought was an example of our cyberpunk dystopia, inducing uh, complicity. This was an okay book. This was written by, was by a uh, robot reading of it. And uh, again, another complicity book, a robot reading. And Gramsci in the world. Gramsci, again, being an important figure for us um, because she's a, a, it's a controversial figure because there's a lot of controversy with regards to his positions on, and I talk about a bunch of that in my several videos. Nazism of Carl Jung and Heidegger, which I obviously is a an important perspective when you know a lot of our perspectives are based on Jung and he uh, Heidegger and a lot of these Nazis. So, and uh, I make a comment on how the, aff the recent affirmative action ruling and how it's just merely another sign of declining American empire. And then we have Melinda Cooper's Family Values. Again, another one of these books that just has five stars on Goodreads, which, you know, it's just a sign that we are just, you know, always just talking to the people that preaching to the choir, it's called. They only, they only write books for themselves, whereas I'm always trying to, you know, reach to the other side, whether it's Right wing, left wing, I don't even think that those ideologies even hold anymore. Uh, neoliberalism, ethics, and social responsibility of psychology. Here I, I focus on the limitations of the, how psychology tries to ethicize itself. Psychology just has no philosophy background. Psychologists have no philosophy background, a bunch of them. I've, I've met a psychologist who didn't know who Kafka was. It's a really dreadful situation with this affirmative action culture, this culture of um, promoting people. Uh, they, I, I feel like psychology should be a master's degree after you have a basic in philosophy bachelor's. That's that's my position on that. Then we have Forever Chemicals and Neoliberal Science, which we talked about. And here's a very important video, I think. I have Keynes versus Hayek. And this is my perspective about how, you know, the, the there's a lie even in the right-wing perspective that these two guys were at odds with each other. But I talk about what we are all Keynesians now means that what that's what Milton Friedman said, right? So we are all Keynesians now. So think about that. What does that mean? What does that exactly mean? It means that all, and this was just a continuation of the Melinda Cooper video. And we have Wittgenstein reads Freud. And a lot of times I, I'm always, when I'm reading, I just say Wittgenstein and just keep reading it, unfortunately, because um, I'm always, I don't know, this, his name is so off-putting for me. So Wittgenstein reads Freud, and that's a very good work because we see the, both the positives and the negatives of Wittgenstein's perspective. And my last video here is the hide mind psychologism of and the medicalization of everyday life. So a lot of the arguments that I make against psychology here are prefaced by an even stronger stance on, uh, on perspectives against, sorry, a lot of the perspectives I take against psychology are premised by an even stronger stance on a critique of psychiatry, which I'm not qualified to, you know, I don't have a medical degree to go after psychiatry, but I use that as an Iron Man perspective, psychiatry as an Iron Man perspective to basically critique psychology itself, and I use that as a metaphor. So I did some also videos about soccer and how say no to racism has been a problem, and I have a video on intermittent fasting and a video about, you know, I'm, I'm very much, you know, pro-Ukraine in, in this war. That's because I'm from the Caucasus and I and I know the situation, and I, I have a very biased perspective of the situation. Uh, then we have a short video on Arendt critiquing clickbait from the grave. This video I really like, Reagan sold out American democracy to Iran. And this is just, it was a mind-boggling perspective for me. Dick Riding, another post-apocalyptic video from Boondocks, amazing. And they actually cut out this perspective and they don't let this perspective, you know, it's harder to find these perspectives, unfortunately, even though it's a famous show. And then we have... This guy, Terry Crews, you know, being an Amazon employee, which is really crazy. And finally, we have a video on Kropkin. And you can also take a look at my lecture blog series, where I put a very, very important lectures on my Tumblr. And these are all my favorite lectures here. I have Decoloni Decolonizing as a Spiritual Path. And I really like her perspective because decolonizing is not just for this color or that color. Decolonizing is for all of us. What does that mean? That's what I talk about in my videos as well. 
so thank you and we have Lawrence Krauss and a lot of really good Dr. Joy DeGray so I you know I come out of the tradition of intersectionality I come out of the I come out of all these traditions and I think that the only way to love is really to critique thank you for taking the time to look at my introduction series and I hope that you will click on the playlist and just let it let it run and listen to it in the background listen to my rants in the background and uh, wishing you all the best and thank you for watching love prosperity